September 2nd, 2024. Today in Hartville, there was a guy from Florida walked out. I heard her dad now, and he's talking about that mafia guy. Anyway, I got in car. He went to another shift and worked. Okay. One point I let my tapes play my car. My car is parked from that case. These people still belong in there. Okay. M13 was hacking protected custody cases and selling them. Okay. Lock into Live streaming. People supposed to be in protected custody. I'm not the one case that got hacked. So if you have a login, turn it into the place that that's, you can do it online, just email it to them, or go on the web page and paste it, because they want to find out how they got hacked. Alright, I came home from work and I lay down to take a nap, and Everywhere I go is fine. So I'm going through where that guy showed up outside my clients in North Canton a few weeks ago. And it sounded like the guy I'm seeing now. And saying stuff that um, I about died when she was telling me that either the place you know, she was in the set and the set before they were talking about it at the station. And uh, they even told him that years ago. And then that agent trying to extort money out of that uh, recruiter. Okay? Actually called me the idiot. That idiot trying to extort money out of the recruiter. Um, for her saying something, he can't do that. And then how he told on her before she talked to him after the hotline. Okay, and the four day loophole of where she called the hotline and that agent went around speaking to everyone before her, was witnessed by the police and then confessed on a reported line that he told on her and met with everyone before her, bullied her and, you know, the listener called her that threatened her. And he's already told, okay? He said, four years ago, I started watching her. I fell in love with her from watching her. I moved my dying wife back here two years ago, so I could meet her, okay? He said, I dream of her every night. When she moved off with that other man where I was going to stay with that other guy. He said, I showed up and told him I had men to take care of him. You better not touch him. Blah, 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 blah. And it sounded like the guy was now. And I'm like, they said it was that drug dealer peep at the boys' alternator. People that said that even more thinks it was a guy with now that he was just angry. That's why his voice sounded different. Well, they copied uh, Agent John's voice, and they said we're all Karen as well. Karen's the only to hear Will's voice. We have a voice alternator. They start talking it through the Bluetooth in their car. They all sounded like Will. They call him Will or John. I don't care if they call him Pinky, but... Okay. And they talked about their voice alternator in 18. They were copying people's voices and then talking, so it sounded like that. You can get apps like that on Google. Okay. He really if you see Pookie but he really needs a password. Well I was freaking out and then when I went down to redo my notary that on the way down there he had took the 
back way and then this other way and I said I can't be late because they have time slots. You go in and do your retraining and at a certain time you're late. You have to reschedule. And you know, he went to park and I said, Well I'll walk to the next block or I drive you. And it's like, Oh, I can walk. And um, you know, it's like I'm not your late wife, I'm kidding. I can walk. And I'm fine. And when the drug dealers walked by, we didn't appreciate the way you talked to him. On the way home, I'm so pissed when I go out and do my training. We get in the car and he said, you must be tired. I said, I'm fine. He said, oh, you must be extra really tired, tired, tired. And I said, I'm fine. He said, at the third time, I looked at him, I said, look, I don't care how you talk to your late wife. You don't tell me how to feel. And I yelled at him really bad because I was already pissed from that drug dealer. And what I had heard out. Well, they had been saying around me, no one else say a word to her. She screamed at him. Then everything they did would be in vain. She almost took off. I know I did. But I got to think, if he had been stalking me for four years, and that was really him, the phone. First, the way he saw me, he said wanted to kill me. And then they said it was Pete with the four salt and they were making fun of me. Now the guy I'm with is very good to me. I know he loves me. If that other part is true, it's not okay. It's definitely not okay, but do I, I don't want these people to resolve me either. See, that's where this is like, oh my god. They said it was just Pete with a force alternator making fun of me. But in 19, they said Karen's well as an old. They said he owns 300 acres. So this guy I'm seeing, he's too shy to meet her. He dreams of her every night. The guy that I'm seeing is the same thing. See what I mean? Not okay. And are they running some kind of mail order bar thing? for their older friends to set up new lives, get rid of everyone they have in life, destroy them, um, so they can set them up and make sure, like I said, they are making sure no one else hates them, nobody else wants them. Is it some kind of weird out order bird thing they set up with their friends? I don't know. It's a good question. this in my apartment when we went out to eat. Went to Bob Evans and uh, on 62. Some guys off to the side were talking. She said it's not a lie. They got a hold of us. We found out it was just uh, the people in the Ravenna, uh, the store in Ravenna. They said it was the police department doing that before. We didn't realize, well, who the hell are you? Because I talk to the police, I talk to the Star County prosecutor's office, and I talk to a federal attorney. Even the FBI would go to jail being in your home outside and protected by case with statements. They have to agree to protect you and have statements of threat of life from everyone that lives there or they can't be in there and they go to jail. It's called entrapment. It's a felony charge of invasion of privacy. You have a right to privacy in your own home. 
that's where the Portage County Sheriff's what these people did was illegal. There's not no officers out where Dave said he had a pee on his own, where my neighbor, four or five houses down, an older white man with white hair and silver car, came in. It was it January to March of 22? Walked in on Tyler. Went to the McDonald's on Wood Bowl on, was it Hills and Dales or Fulton Road Corner? The Alpha on Terrace. Her ex husband showed up in a store a little bit. Told everyone he didn't want his wife anymore and asked everyone there to help get rid of her. And they all agreed to help. It's been the people in the store who were going to do this before. And some of them had worked for a while and they were willing to hurt her for money. Her day said he hired Pete on his own. He was a local drug dealer. He works for the vet market. And the work rep were unemployed drug dealers. Uh, they got in. The uh, drug cartel showed up in stores. They were recruiting people to help them. They went from having old junky vehicles to $80,000 trucks in six months. They were helping grab and sell people. They're just a piece of meat to them. They will sell you for sex life, murder, or body part. Like my friend from the prosecutor, so County prosecutor's office. <sighs> Said the same thing about nobody can be in your home. So did the police I talked to and a criminal attorney. Okay, it's a right to privacy. No judge would sign his own arrest warrant of taking the right of privacy away. They would never even sign a court order. Or a payment. They would only time they would, uh, I take that back. The, um, the only time they would can be in your home is to protect a lot of cases with statements with a court order. Mm hmm Because it's a right of privacy and that judge would get in trouble. And you have to have a court order by the Fourth Amendment. And there's nothing else but protected custody cases with statements. Mm hmm And no judge would sign his own arrest warrant of uh, taking someone's freedom of speech away outside a jury trial. The Department of Justice or the state would put them in jail for making constitutional warnings. So where Dave said he hired Pete on his own, what was supposed to happen by federal law? They both were supposed to be arrested and everyone involved. These people were drug beat, raping me, cup and drugging me up and telling me to say something stupid. And I'm so tired of people acting ignorant. This is 2024, and it's not 1950 with no technology. Everything's been digital for years. We all know you can put somebody's head on somebody else's body, change your eye color, hair color. They can take a picture of you, put you out in space, standing on top of the space shuttle. Okay? They can put a space suit on you. Hmm? They can take a video of you showering and put you in a spacesuit. Make it look like you're showering in a spacesuit. They can take videos of cats and make cats look like they're dancing. Right dancing. They can take words out of sentences, other sentences, and then tape over them and make new sentences. And then date rape, amnesia drugs, or sleepwalking. I have gave several examples of people I have met that have been worthy and had no memory of what happened to him. And I even met one guy that had been worthy, and he was still talking off the wall. Kind of tell me he was a New York cop and thought I was pretty, I'm like, I'm sleeping at all. I don't remember saying it to me or telling people it was an asthma. They had LSD in the 1960s. Hippies were taking more for our homes today. Now they have what they call date rape and nature drugs. The mind controlling drugs. High doses and prescription drugs. There's over 20 of them that will make you sleepwalk. It's right on Google. Under somebody else's control. So I'm tired of people acting ignorant. These people have left. And FBI agent John Jim said in 23 how they made a fool out of them. November 18th, 22. Eric wanted the one of the stalkers by the Maslin place. 
confessed that everything was him and not me and time for a stunt for people to turn on me and they fell apart. Ha 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 ha. March 1st of 3rd, 21, they said they put two clips together and made a porn. It's not true, it's them. They might not describe me as shy. Ha 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 ha. ha. So you figured out what they did. May 12th, 22 at noon, they found a tape of them admitting a shower scene in the other room. May 26th, 22 at noon, the shower scene was not on purpose. In November, in like March of 22, they told the next door neighbor where I was working that he'd ordered everything to be drugged, photoshopped, and made up on me. They told the editor from the apartment December 9, 21, 4 p.m. that all the tapes they for were them and not me, and that uh, it was just a bunch of men doing crimes down here. Same day, white man ball with dark eyes. Disturbing food at the Stark County Hunger Task Force on 9th Street. Mark my case, he was gone. Came out, we always knew the tapes were for with them and not her, so we never said a word. Beginning of the case, they tried to say they had sodium pentothal reports and were driving me up and tell me to say stuff in front of the police and the FBI. They admitted they were some guy named Chris out of the room. I never had a Chris in my house. They said that they photoshopped all the lies and made everything up on me. And they had done it before and laughing in my face in front of the FBI and the police. In August of 2023, they said, uh, Officer Mark told the lady, it's been documented and verified I was framed before. And it was a drug cartel in my home before. And it's also documented and verified some medication I had that made me sick before. And another woman was used in my insurance. My part of the case was over by Thanksgiving of 18. On Thanksgiving of 18, and I, I heard um, my uh, youngest son, or my oldest son, John, and his kids in the basement saying the house wasn't meant for me. It was not for Auntie John, Papa, and Grandma to get out and look down there all in a huddle, rubbing their hair and laughing. Okay? Talking crazy crap. I go set by upstairs, set by Dixie. And um, four of my other granddaughter came running up. They were playing blue in the basement, taking each one of us down. Let them jump out and go, ah, you have to act scared. You're fine to eat. You just entertain them. We're down there 30 seconds. Go back on the third step up. We're down there all in a huddle, talking crazy crap loud. Oh, was that by Dixie and the baby? I have to die for a shell. A shell. Okay. Four comes running up. They're saying mean things in the basement. Dixie's like, stay out of it. I'm like, go up to John. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. I told Melissa, that's his ex wife. You're going through a divorce and you're going to be moving out. Uh, she'll just have the kids make up something. But trust me, Mom, nobody could ever say anything bad about you. She'll probably have the church people make up something too, but trust me. No one could ever say anything bad about me. I said, well, you shouldn't have said something until I moved out. Or, or something happened between me and Dad. He's like, well, I did. So, since nobody can say anything bad about you, don't worry about it. They'll just make us up. Okay? So, to clarify everything, I, I called Dave up and I reported. And I'm like, Dave, I've never heard anyone. He's like, Karen go to the kids, you go to the grandkids. You would never hurt anyone. You're good to everyone, no matter who it is. I expected him to defend me, and he did. Two of the young agents work in uh, the Canton FBI office. I thought they were officers, but I seen them walk in the back of the FBI office. Okay. Right, and they were talking about the kids. Right. They were in Walmart 62 right after Thanksgiving of 2018 talking to, to a bunch of undercover police officers. They were all talking, why are they having those kids make all that shit up? I said, oh, they're just trying to scare her out of the house. That's it. He said, we interviewed her whole family. She's, uh, they spoke highly of her. Okay? So, that part's over. 
And by Thanksgiving of 18, I had went to all my family physicians. They were in the back. And they made sure when they have cameras in there watching the doctors take care of you. Said, uh, you always blame the steroids. But they had drawn so much medication. Hard to tell them which one or the combination thereof made everything swell up and everything shut down. Because the medication made you sick before. It's a good thing you got off of it, got on pain medicine, and got out moving. Was medication errors. It's documented medical malpractice. Medication errors and fraud. All the family physicians told on him in 2002 it was proven I am, um, within nine months, I was perfectly well in 2003, July of 2003. Within two months, the brain swelling was gone, the seizure stopped, the heart attack stopped, my thyroid adrenal glands started working. Not then, over nine months of swelling, where I had massive amount of swelling on my body, slowly went down, I learned to walk again. Is a medicine causing all of it? Like they said, they were known for lying, falsely diagnosing people, ripping them off, making them sick. So you have to come back, sharing with associates and friends, known for doing the same thing, and then making us sick to do unnecessary procedures, get an attorney and so on. You are not the first one or the only one that have done this to turn them into the state and put them of them to pull their license. They would have went to jail for like 50 years for attempted murder if they damaged my heart. And all those other side effects. Within two months, the brain swelling's gone, the seizures stopped, thyroid adrenal glands working again, and where my heart was and large, they caused mainly heart attacks. My heart still flutters, goes into like a tachycardia, but I don't require medication. But they caused it and caused many heart attacks and my whole body just fell off. So my legs would pop out of place and have canes and braces. They lied so bad they said I had level two brain tumors and they were causing the brain swelling. They almost killed me. They would have went to jail for that if I would have reported them. But Danny, a uh, strange person, my youngest son Danny, did suicide in 2003 and I had to take care of myself. Or I would have been a millionaire. you can't say something's wrong with somebody. You give them a bunch of medication and they almost die and it takes another doctor to tell on them. And then prove them when they get off the medication they get well and that you were causing them. Okay? Right. So my part of the case was over by Thanksgiving of 18. And you know, when people pull Christmas Eve of 22, where Eric on November 18th, 22, one of the one that stopped from the end of Walmart 62, all the tapes are for over me and not her. It was my idea to come up with it, my idea to go, my idea to say, for all those people turn on her, and they thought, well, ha, ha, ha. well, it's only you, I could take care of it. I know it's that bad, and they still thought more. I did this Eric, November 24, 22, at Mercy Medical. They all heard that Eric make fun of everyone for falling for this. Okay. Well, Christmas Eve of 22, I go to Danny and Jen. I said, do you know anything about that jackass? No. I said, do you know, remember on the sixth day where they uh, kicked my door into the wall when we were at the storage unit? Yes. Did you know about buying cameras? He's talking to me. No. Did you know about a shower scene and washing in the other room to make me look better? No. Do you remember where I had orange, lemon, and grapefruit-sized roses all over me? Yes. I almost passed out in front of the neighbor by the second week. Yes. And it kept happening. I kept getting dizzy and throwing up. Did you know they were dragging, beating me, and dragging me up and telling me to say, where does that? No. Thought you were working too hard and bruised too easy. Didn't think about it. Nobody thought of predators harming me. Kids came out of the room. Grandma, is that what's going on? We didn't know. Okay. And to Josh, I've never done anything bad or wrong. Never said you did. Went to the boys. I've never done anything bad or wrong. That's the truth. Always been good to you. Yes. Same with Josh's girls. And like Officer John said, what did those kids get without stating? They made everything up and they were games to pretend. And Flora, my other granddaughter that was playing with them, pulled a bunch of uh, people 
October 21st, 2019. Of course, I never happened. Of course, it wasn't true. We made that up. They were names of Ben Willis's kids. They're documented in journals. I found it in some of everything by Thanksgiving 18. My part of the case was over. In March 1st to 5th, uh, 1st to 15 of 2019, the 1st to the 15th, um, someone calls Dave, I'm sitting on the back porch, 6 to 10 at night. What's going on? It's nothing but a real life case of how to get away with murder. She'll realize it. They're killing people in front of people. And when you realize that, and they think you're stupid, like they said, they fooled everyone into helping out. Okay? They, uh, from the first month of the case, an old man walked up to me in front of the police and the FBI for every other one. You're telling us, well, turn around. Like, who are you? You try to leave Dave, unless you're John Monster. I'm like, who are you? He's like, you know that bruise on your leg? I woke up with a bruise the size of a lemon. Okay? Been throwing out that money. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I used to be in Pentagon. No, he didn't. He used to date where you talk. And you should talk. You know what you told me? I didn't talk to him. He stabbed me in my sleep. Again. And something about wearing a long nightgown bending over him probably and accidentally seeing a spot and like a pain present. You try to leave Dave, a lesser child monster for that. I got away from that thing. Went home to a legally bought house. Dave verified I was wearing a grandma nightgown, underwear, and a house coat. And they only made fun of the back of my knees. But he admitted in front of the police and the FBI, he was driving me out, he worked for Dave. And this was the plan the first month that I had died. And they kept showing up and laughing in my face how I had bruises before. They were driving me up and telling me to say all kinds of stuff. That they raised people out of the room, they photoshopped all the lies before. By January 19, they said they photoshopped me using a permanent white view above the toilet in the other room to make me look weird. By some guy named Chris all room. I've never seen or talked to anybody before that guy. You talk about scary and movie shit. How would you like to take a drink out of a two liter diet coke in the room for the same time? Wake up four or five hours later, head spinning, hurting. Run to the bathroom throwing up. Where did I bang my arm on my Huh? They kept past me. And then with the well water is really dirty before we got the water treatment system. I thought it was giving me a severe personal infection until I couldn't hardly be in here and be in drug being left in my own home. Where do these people think they can violate people and get away with it? It is absolutely insanity. They weren't arrested the first day. Pete's nothing but the local drug dealer. And these were unemployed people willing to hurt people. To for the money. They ended up where they had junk cars in the beginning of the case. But then six months they had $80,000 trucks from all the people they sold. They joined the drug cartel. The drug cartel was in storms four groups of family traveling around making money as we go you have to be willing to give up everyone and everything in life to join us they were recruiting people a lot of people even Ohio joined them that's where up in Hartville that one guy uh, when I was having trouble with my car he came out and looked at it it's like you know the human traffic was that way I'm like, I know. He's like, uh, he adopted one of the young girls that were helping sell people. She had a little baby. She's not going to get out of jail for like 20 years. And I want that baby to grow up in uh, foster care. And I said, well, that was nice of you. He said, do you ever see a guy about our age that means 50s? Tall, thin. Clean cut, um, white as blonde hair, expensive dress shirt, sleeves rolled up, dress pants. I'm like, yes. You've seen him in your life? Several times. 
you know, doing Batman. I'm like, so. Starts grabbing his chest. I'm like, are you okay? He's like, you don't realize who that was. I'm like, so are you okay? He's grabbing his chest. He said, I've had strokes before. You don't know. You've seen him in your life several times. Like I said, and can't we all see that guy around over before? No, this is funny. I thought he was a cop because he was dressed like so. He didn't have a name take on that guy. But he wasn't seen around the undercover police that are seen around police officers that they call off. So I should have guessed with him being by himself, he was a bad guy. But he didn't have a name take on. Hmm? He didn't fight me, so. That was that Russian drug war. That was selling people here. I said I thought it was MVD. He said, oh, they may have been helping him, but that was him. You've seen him in your life and men start walking around me. He's like, I, I gotta go back in the store. I thought, they're probably cops. They probably want to talk to me. One time, like, because my phone's locked in, so is my car. And they all heard you. That's where the first month of the case, Henry Moffey tried to get a hold of me. Uh, through Instagram, said he thought I was beautiful. They're trying to kill me. They think I'm pretty. The gentleman's club from Florida showed up. 300 pound men with long black hair. From we all work for the King from Texas. We are his men. Dave hired us. He sent us here to help. He's a drug lord. It's a fentanyl king if you look him up. California showed up and was announcing the drugs they were selling. There was Michigan, Buffalo, New York drug dealers. Okay. Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia drug dealers. Georgia human traffickers. Florida human traffickers. Texas human traffickers. There was also Tennessee and Kentucky people here. What's not funny, they found a guy from Tennessee with three of the kids they took. That's how not funny this is. The marshal showed up January 20th, 23 out in Worcester. My one friend I was having dinner with, he said I have a friend on a police department. They know about the case that agent opened with him. And they know about the Texas group involved in the case. I'm like the king's man, because we all work at the king from Texas. You know, and then we start going through everything, and then he starts drilling me in front of him until I'm stunned. I walk outside where the U.S. Marshals, and we're going to take care of this. And I can't, we can't believe that agent left her there. He said he left her there because she's weird with herself. That was probably them and not her. And who would care if she was? I can't believe he actually left her there. And they're complaining about that agent. Well, it was them and not me, June 7th, 23. FBI agent down fell for the stun I taste here for it. Oh, come on up. That FBI agent actually fell for that. That's only a stun. You're kidding. You mean FBI agent John fell for the stun I taste here for <laughs> June 7, 23, Walmart 62. Idaho's Tabernacle on the Cartel on March 1st or 3rd or 21, they said they put two foot together, put her in a porn, and slapped her aside. Then later on, while you're describing a shower and she figured out what they did. That's where May 12, 22, they were screaming at them. We found, um, at noon, we found a tape of them admitting a shower scene in the other room, May 26, 22 at noon. Um, the shower scene was done on purpose to make it look weird. March 24, 22, 1, 1.30, they admitted to frame me. May 25th, 21, 6 p.m. Uh, Wendy's in Louisville, all the church people breaking in before driving me, telling me to say weirdo stuff. 8, 9, 21, the apartment building, 42nd, plus the fence lady and little girls live there, they're outside talking about it. The four or five neighbors did a police report. 12, 95, here, one little old white lady screamed at him, talked to several people on 21. 
okay? November 1st, 3rd, or 21, an African American lady in St. Laurent found out they made everything up on me, told people to stay out of it. December 9, 21, at a Philphone apartment, and the guy at the 100 task force of everything being them and not me. January 19th, 22, Department of Disability of being drugged in Tulsa Sea before February 2nd, 22, at, um, a Latino man around noon. Burlington broke after a minute he drove me first and told me to say it. A minute frame made me March 24th, 22. Eric made fun of everybody November 18th, 22. The um, lighthouse made fun of FBI agent on June 7th, 23. And made a public fool out of him. June 30th to July. Uh, June 20th to July 4th of last year, 23, they said they went to a party and left how they made fools out of all these people. We're helping out. In 19, the 18 and 19, they said they were trying to get a group of people together to hang me. Okay. And then in June or July of 19, in Canal Fulton and Pizza Hut, they said I overheard them. They're trying to get a group of people to take her out and beat her to death. They've been trying to get people to harm me for them so that you go to jail. Like they said, they tricked everybody into helping out this. See the lack of rationality of the people that are helping out us. That's for girls in Dollar General. None of this is funny. We went to the place and they said they always knew it was just the people in the store where then I did it to her before. We looked it up, all those people saying that agent didn't have enough authority to ask her to stay quiet. And he stole their money. None of this is funny. They tricked all these people into helping out. It isn't. That's where the criminal attorney, Star County Prosecutor's Office, and the place I talked to, First Amendment, it takes a judge to put a gag order on. That agent is only a higher police officer. Okay? He can't even ask you to stay quiet and tell whoever you want. I said, but from the time I talked to the hotline, he went around telling everyone I called FBI. He was witnessed by the police and admitted on the recorded line several times. He told me, on me and met with that and everyone bullied me before I was there for it, and then threatened me, he can't talk to you like that, the police know they can't go along with it. It takes a judge and a jury to uh, do to the freedom of speech. He's only a higher police officer, he's only pulling you to get away with this. He stole my money. Like they keep saying, it's that idiot stealing her money. That's where even Sheriff David and Mike DeWine's cousin, he said if he stole your money, he stole others that go back through the case. He was too arrogant about it this time. He can't withhold it. He cannot misdirect it. Criminal attorney prosecutor's office in place you get the money for a uh, workman case. And like the prosecutor's office, you risk your life to get them information. They owe you for the rest of your life. You don't realize the way the agent opened that case. You're also in the witness protection program. These people actually tried to kill you. They could wait and try to kill you again. You cannot get out of a witness protection program for the rest of your life. You can tell whoever you want and they can't say a word. I said, why are you told on me? It doesn't matter who you tell. He said, informants are different. You could stay yourself and you feed them information. They owe you for risking your life. Getting them information. And then you get the money for working the case, and only for working the case. And that agent is only a higher police officer. And it takes a judge to do the freedom of speech to put a gag order on you. The police know that. And he doesn't have enough authority to even ask anybody to say, what? I said, but he already told them. It doesn't matter. He's only bullying you for them to get away with it. And the police would know that. And he can't bully you into false statements either. And you get the money for the rest of your life. And he can't stop it, and he can't misdirect it. The police know that. Because 
you got to think, if me calling the hotline, they drug me up so bad I can't get out of bed for three days. In the meantime, he's going around to all the church people telling them on me that I called the hotline. Then, when we get up to church that night, he's up there telling on me, and Pam was screaming at Dave, and I walk off. And he's already told people at Apostolic Church of Parkton I was being, he knew I was being drunk, being raped, and didn't care. And tried to save for strangers' lives. He's going to go along with all this. He already told him that. Dave said he talked to him at that church when I walked off. And then on a recorded line the next day, admitted he met with everyone, talked to everyone, told on me for calling that FBI hotline, acts like a crazy occult person, makes me beg for my life, then lets me out for it with money and immunity, and then threatens me if I tell him. And he's already told, like I said, it's a four-day loop of what that agent did. He went around telling on the victim, calling for help. Witness lack of police, telling on him. Made it on the recorded line. He met with everyone and told on him. We're calling for help. Then let's do inform it and then threaten her. But he's already told everyone and he told first. And now one of their agents actually telling on a victim, calling for help. They could never drive. We'll see, like, the prosecutor's office until the FBI puts you in another witness protection program. You'll stay in a home for life. That agent has stole over $350,000, $360,000 since it's September 2nd. Yesterday, on the first, he got another five grand. Do you know where last year in October, where they were offering people money and all this stuff to help point me? The people got to talking. Nobody actually got anything. And they realized where they were offering people money to say and do stuff to me. They never gave them anything. They tricked them into helping out. People in this area were willing to harass, stalk, and harm other people for money. That's pathetic. That's how pathetic these people are. And then if they would actually think if it was happening to them, to find out some sexual predator was stalking you through black cameras, selling you on porn sites, selling your grandkids on kitty porn sites, where you were waking up with bruises infected, heart racing, almost him passing out, that he'd been having people break in and drug, beat, and rape you. You go to the doctor, and the doctor's not thinking of rapists, and treating all the signs for it, and they've been drugging you up and telling you to say something stupid and beat and rape you. You'd be pissed if I end up that asshole did an asinine stunt of photoshopping or shopping in the other room. You're not in trouble for being victimized by a drug dealer and some out of work people want to scam on you. That's absurd. Those people should have been arrested for being bio sick criminals. I'm going to throw this.